I am now a Boeing 777 rated pilot. And I want to make a video explaining how that goes, how, how it happened at a major airline. Hi, my name is Darren. I'm a dad, airline pilot, husband of a scientist, and I make videos about my career that I love so much. So I used to be an Airbus pilot. Now I'm going to be flying a Boeing 777. And my check ride, per se, was a couple of days ago. I made a video about that as a maneuvers validation. And that's just going through all the emergency stuff, making sure I can handle the aircraft in an odd situation. The actual check ride, though, where I get giving my type rating, that is more of like a line flight. And it's all done in real time. There's no resetting. And it's judging how I sit in my seat and how I do a pilot flying and pilot monitoring as a crew. Now, it's myself and the captain. We're both going for the same rating. Again, believe it or not, one of us could pass and one of us could fail. Spoiler alert, we both passed. <laughs> But this is how it all went down. Uh, we had a 6 a.m. start on Sunday morning. And the instructor, the examiner that day, has never seen us fly the plane before ever. So it's a very first look, no bias situation. All throughout the process, we had different instructors for different portions of the flight. And they, they made it so that whoever taught us the initial would never teach us again. And then we had someone that kind of reviewed, make sure we're ready for the next stage and you know, so forth. But it was always someone different to make sure it wasn't just one person teaching us everything how it used to be like for my private instrument kind of thing anyway 6 a.m showed up we had a very brief briefing um there was no instruction involved he was telling us what the day is going to entail this is all done in a simulator of course cops in the sim and the day before on our loft which is a line oriented flight training event similar to the loe which is the check ride the line line observation event i believe it's called uh we got, I flew the day before, first leg, captain flew second leg. So on this day, captain flew first leg, I flew second leg. We were in JFK, headed to Boston. Now, it's not a very realistic flight for a 777, but it had, they had to have an, a, a flight in real time and sometimes expensive. So now going to have us fly, you know, JFK to London. That's kind of a waste of a trip, right? So uh, we left JFK, so taxing to the, to the runway. And our first issue we encountered was suddenly the visibility dropped to half a mile which is fine, but they wanted to see how we'd handle that. How do we handle it? We verified on the charts that we're legal take off with half mile visibility. And on that chart, you see, uh, on the JFK 10.9 alpha chart, it shows you just have to have adequate visual references, meaning as long as the captain feels safe taking off, we can take off. And in this case, we had centerline lights, uh, at runway edge lights, touchdown zone lights, plenty of lighting on the runway to safely take off. Line up and run runway, 777-200, took off. Getting some vectors around. Um, it, wasn't, it was very uneventful, and we were kind of surprising how uneventful it was. But we took off. It gave us some vectors. And I think the, what was the first thing we actually did after getting vectors? We, we, we climbed higher to fight with 210. Then we got a reroute, which was kind of weird and annoying. And then we were given the uh, um, little bit of turbulence. And it's a very short flight. So then we were given uh, vectors in for the RNAV Zulu, I think, approach to runway 33 left into Boston. We were told the weather was good enough for the arrival and the approach. Again, it's a very compressed event, um, as fast as we're flying and all that all stuff going on. So they want to make sure that we would handle like the speed of the aircraft going down as far as the, getting everything done we needed to get done as far as flight attendants, the passengers, telling the operations, everything was supposed to be done in real time and make sure everyone's notified. Came in for the first approach, and it was always expectation bias. I'm always expecting to see the runway. So as pilot monitoring, I am looking outside, inside, outside, mostly outside, to make sure I can let the captain know when I, if I see the approach lights or the runway. That's all I'm supposed to see, right? I see approach lights, he can keep going down 100 feet above touchdown zone elevation. Runway, he can land. Well, coming down... I saw nothing. And it was a planned event that way. So I said, no contact. We did a go around, 200 go around. And on the go around, we were so heavy on purpose that the FAA minimum holding speed, our maximum holding speed at that altitude was below what we need to do safely in the clean aircraft. That was testing us to make sure we know what the holding speed should be for the FAA and then for our aircraft. And we had to ask for relief from the, from the controller giving me, hey, we're too heavy, we need to hold faster. Not a big deal. Once we encountered that threat, we took care of it. We were giving vectors for the ILS um, approach to runway 33 left. Again, 200 ILS, right? Came in, shot the approach, landed just fine, taxi to the gate, and that was it for the first leg. Pretty uneventful.
time compressed was pretty uneventful. We did take a short break. We then hopped back in the same airplane, and it's like a through flight. A uh, very short taxi this time to runway four left for departure. And they set it up so that we were really, really heavy. We had a ridiculous amount of fuel on board, like 120,000 pounds of fuel to go to, to JFK, right? Um, and it was to the point where on my performance charts, we were like 3,000 pounds away from being too heavy for that runway as far as the safely take off, the runway limiting weight on that runway. So we could easily ask for four right if we needed to, but again, it was safe for performance charts, so we took off on four left. Now, part of the issue was it was such a short taxi, going to make sure that we plan to move on time and not feel stressed or compressed and skip things going very short from the gate to the runway. Took off fine, my leg, climbed up, turned all pod on because they don't need to see me fly the sim. They want to see me operate this aircraft safely. And sims are kind of silly to fly. Anyway, my opinion. Anyway, uh, took off, gave us more rerouting because that's what they do. And we're headed toward JFK. We're in the uh, IMC, so had the weather radar on, and there's a giant thunderstorm ahead of us. Now, this is like a choose your own adventure book where I'm allowed to deviate around the storm and go to JFK. So that's what I did. So I started deviating, and I deviated upwind from the storm to avoid turbulence, climbing up. And once we leveled off at 210, we had an in, a right engine uh, oil pressure issue, lost all oil pressure. That, that led us to, one, declare an emergency because we won one engine. Um, we, we, and we, we leveled off at like, actually, we leveled off at 17,000 feet. We didn't get to 210. We're at 17,000 feet. We stopped climbing because we couldn't climb anymore. Uh, ran the checklist, ended up shutting down the engine. And now here's a two joint adventure book. Do you want to go forward toward JFK? I'll go back to Boston, where you just came from, which is right behind you. There was no wrong answer. We figured, you know what, we're closer to Boston. Let's go back to Boston. So we turned back, headed toward Boston, and now Boston is very close to us. So now we're having to brief the approach, let the company know what's going on, let ATC know what's going on, let the flight attendants know what's going on, let the passengers know what's going on, make sure the aircraft is safe, do all the performance charges for a single engine landing, single engine go around, all that kind of stuff. Of course, brief the approach. And I started slowing down the airplane because the captain had a lot to do. And again, they're watching both of our seats. So as we're, as we're descending toward the runway, um, I'm going 200 knots, trying to keep it slow. And I was okay. And the approach controller, which is the examiner, said, are you ready for the approach? Let me know. I'm like, that's the captain. Hey, buddy, you ready for the approach yet? He's like, not quite yet, Darren. I'm like, hey, no big deal. Hey, we need vectors through the final. They gave us vectors, did a big old right turn, 360 almost. Came back for a single engine uh, landing of four right, and we were overweight. And it was, and again, it's another s- situation they wanted to see how we'd react to being overweight. Now, we were only like 5,000 pounds over max landing weight, but it's still a situation where we are heavy, heavier than, pl- heavier than structurally planned for um, uh, landing. So I briefed, hey, you know what? It's a long runway. We're on one engine. There is no reason, and we're heavy. There's no reason for me to stand on the brakes. So I said, I'm going to land with no auto brakes and roll to the end of the runway. So we told the fire trucks to meet us at the end of the runway because, again, we have an engine shut down. We don't know why it shut down. But, but, well, oil pressure, I guess. But uh, came in, broke out about 1,000 feet, single engine approach. I left the all pod on to about 300 feet because it's not just him. Turned all pod off, made a great landing. Uh, rolled long on the runway, exited, fire truck parade to the gate, and that was the check ride. After that, we uh, did a, a small debrief, got our new certificates, got a fancy sticker, and headed out the door. This is much different than when I was first given check rides. My first airline, we did, uh, we did what was called a 121 check ride, where it was single pilot. And I hated that check ride because then there was someone in, uh, there was a captain next to me in, in, in that situation, but they could do nothing except what I told them to do. I could be going toward a brick wall. We were going to crash the airplane, and they couldn't say a single word. It was very negative and, and negative training, in my opinion. Uh, the new AQP stuff, where they're, they're, we're operating a flight in a normal situation, is I, I think a better training and a better evaluation of a pilot than in the old-fashioned single pilot stuff. But if you're curious about how a tech ride goes at a major airline, that's it. That's it. I hope to start making videos again about Triple Seven and um, my new adventures flying around the world. Hope you enjoy it. Click subscribe if you're interested. Otherwise, have a great day. And as always, thank you for stopping by.